Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova's Beard Tech, and today we're going to be doing a quick review on the Raspberry Pi 3, right here, right now. If you guys are new to a Raspberry Pi family, I actually have a playlist of videos on what you could do with these little guys. I'm going to leave a link in the description below and a card up above. Now most of them are directed to the Raspberry Pi 2, which is not much different from the Raspberry Pi 3 itself. The only thing that the Raspberry Pi 3 really changed is the chip and adding Wi-Fi. Let's talk about that a little. So guys, as you can see, nothing much has changed from the Raspberry Pi 2 from the Raspberry Pi 3. Everything looks exactly the same, form factor is exactly the same, so is the 40 pin layout. What they did keep also, which I really wish they changed, would be the 2.0 and the Ethernet together on the same bus. At least they could have changed this to a 3.0 or something like that, but I guess it's still too expensive for them to make it a $35 price point at the same, you know, giving an Ethernet a USB 3.0. Now, the biggest change that you're going to see on the Raspberry Pi 3 is the system on chip. They actually changed it to a 64-bit processor at 1.2 gigahertz. If you take a look at the raspberrypi.org.com, they actually have benchmarking of how much faster this is. It's actually about 30 to 40% faster than its predecessor. So that's a huge change. On top of that, they actually upped a lot of the stuff inside. Originally, this is the video chip is only clocked at 250 megahertz, and the Raspberry Pi 3 is at 400 megahertz. Little stuff like that here and there does increase the performance dramatically. This definitely helps if you do transcoding, like a, a Plex Media server or something like that. You will see increased load times using the Raspberry Pi 3 because it, all these stuff adds up. It just increases the speed for everything. They also changed the RAM speed from like 400 megahertz, I believe, from the Raspberry Pi 2 to 900 megahertz on the Raspberry Pi 3, but it still uses the same DDR2. On the underside, nothing much has changed. They did add that this is a huge thing, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now it's embedded into the chip itself. So you see this little guy over here? Be careful because you might scratch it. So I highly recommend a case for this guy, something that's ventilated. Now on top of what I was just saying, why we would need a ventilated case, this chip gets super hot. Uh, according to some folks over at Reddit, this chip could get over to 100 degrees Celsius. So you gotta be really careful of that because if you don't put a heat sink on there, you might just burn out. You gotta be really gutsy not to do something, not to put a chip on there. I just got this and I'm ordering one of these uh, heat sinks to put on. So I'm waiting for that to come in before I really do some intense testing with it. On top of that, you gotta remember to get the newest Raspbian image. The one that you download from Noobs right now still doesn't support Wi-Fi right out of the box. So if you get the Raspbian image, once you load it in, Wi-Fi works. Works. The noobs image, you would actually have to do the sudo app get update and everything just to get that going. Now back to the top, you're gonna see the USB is still at the same spot, it's still a full HDMI, still got the video audio output in the same connector over here. You got the camera pins, you got the display pins, and then you got the GPIO. What they did change is the LED positioning. So they went from the LED here on the 2.0 uh, Raspberry Pi 2, and on Raspberry Pi 3 they have the LEDs out over here. All in all, the only thing that I really wish they changed was either adding a USB 3.0 or add in a gigabit ethernet adapter and then don't have it run on the same bus line. So thanks for watching my review. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. It's actually a little bit easier to get me there. I'll leave a link on my Twitter handle down in the description right here. Now, I actually have a buddy of mine who just did a really cool video with these and basically it's him streaming his Steam game from his PC directly to one of these guys and hooking it up to a TV. So if you wanna click his face right here, his name's TechWiz. Check out his videos. He's got some good stuff. If you guys haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also gives you notification on when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.